What's up you guys? So for this video, we're gonna go over the problem find all duplicates in an array. This is a popular problem asked at both Amazon and Facebook. So the description says, given an array of integers from one to n, where n is the size of our array, some elements appear twice and others appear once. Find all the elements that appear twice in this array. Could you do it without extra space and in linear runtime? So in this first example, we're given an integer array and we only need to return the elements that appear twice. So we have a two and a three that appear twice in this input. And so a very important part of this problem is recognizing this constraint right here that all of our elements, specifically a at index i, are going to be between one and n inclusive, where n is the size of our array. So the brute force solution to this problem is we could just use a set. And we would loop over our input array and add all of our numbers into the set. And whenever we attempt to add a number into the set that has already been added, that would mean we have a duplicate and then we just add it to our result. But that would give us a O of N time and space complexity. And this part of the problem, they want us to do it without extra space. So I'm gonna go over that solution on the whiteboard. So we have this integer array, four, three, two, seven, eight, two, three, one. And that gives us a total size of eight. We have eight total elements inside of this array. So what that means is all of the items inside of our array are going to be between one and eight. And so we need to try to reduce the space complexity. We don't want to use a set to solve this problem. So we need to figure out how we can use this input to solve the problem. So having only positive numbers is really helpful for us because what we're going to do is we're going to iterate our input and we're going to do a mapping from the number that we look at and look at that element's index and we're going to flip it to a negative number. So I'm going to walk through this example so it makes more sense. So we're going to start at index zero and we see that we have a number four. So what that means is let's go to four minus one's index because the index is zero based and the numbers that we have are from one to n. So that's why we do minus one. So we're gonna go four minus one and we're going to check that value. So four minus one, that index brings us a value of seven because that's this number right here. And what we need to do is we need to check if this value is a negative number. If we check if this value is a negative number and it is, that means we found a duplicate. If it's not, then we flip the sign. So now this position's value will be negative seven. And then we're going to continue iterating. So we have a three, three minus one, that gives us two. So we need to look at the second index and we find a two. And this number is not negative, so we just flip the sign. Now we have negative two. We're gonna go to the next value and we're going to do two minus one. We don't wanna do negative two minus one, so we're gonna do the absolute value of the number that we're looking at. So we'll do two minus one, which is one. And that's uh, this number three, and we flip that sign. And then we continue. We do seven minus one, because we're doing the absolute value of the number we're looking at. And that would give us an index of six. And so that's this number right here. And we're going to flip that number. So we have a negative three once again. And then we're going to continue iterating to eight, so we do eight minus one, that gives us a seven. So we look at index seven. Number one is not negative, so we just flip it. And then we continue here. We have a two, and we need to do two minus one, 
And so that would give us an index of 1. So if we go check index 1 now, we can see that we already have a negative number. So what that means is 2 must be a duplicate because we've already encountered, we've already calculated this index before. So we would do 2 in our, uh, is one of our output uh, numbers. And then we continue iterating. So now we have 3. So we do 3 minus 1. That would be index 2. And then if we look here at index 2, we can see that that's already a negative number. So that means we've already calculated this index. So 3 is now in our output array. And then we iterate one more time. And then we do 1, absolute value of negative 1, minus 1 is index 0. We check index 0. Uh, that's a positive number, so we just flip the sign. And then we're finished iterating. So 2 and 3 would be our duplicates. So that is how you solve this problem without using extra space. It's definitely a tricky solution to come up with, but that's probably why they ask you to do it. They want to try to throw curveballs with this problem because the set solution is fairly simple. So next, I'm going to jump over to the code, and I'll show you guys how to implement it. So we're given an integer array nums, and we need to return a list of integer. So let's create our result list. And we need to iterate over nums, right? So we can say for an i, i is less than nums.length. And we need to extract our index. So the index that we're going to look up by will be the current number we're looking at minus 1. So we can say in index is going to be nums at index i minus 1. That is our, our index that we're going to look up and check if the position at that index is a negative or not. And that will decide whether or not we add that number to the result. But one more thing we need to do is we need to do the absolute value of nums of i. Because remember, if this value was already set to a negative 1 where the position we're looking at, we don't want to do a negative number minus 1 because then that will break our code. So we need to do math absolute value minus 1. And then we can say if nums at our index, if it's less than 0, what that means is we've already calculated this index before, and we just need to add uh, the, the number to our result. So we're going to say result.add index plus 1. The reason why we do plus 1 here is because, remember, this is not 0 based when we're adding in uh, this result. The, the result array uh, are 1 based because we have numbers going from 1 to n. So that's why we do index plus 1 and not just index. And then finally, if we come out of this if statement, we need to flip the sign. So we can say nums at our index is equal to num minus of nums index. So we're just flipping the sign. And then we can just return our result. So let's make sure that this code works. And there we go. So next, I'm going to go over the time and space complexity. So as we discussed, the time complexity is going to be big O of n, where n is the number of elements that we have in our input array. We have to loop over every element a single time. And then our space complexity is constant. So if you consider our result that we initialize on line 9 as extra space, then it would be big O of n. But I see a lot of different responses on leak code. Some people include the output as extra space and some don't. So for this specific problem, we'll just consider it constant. So hopefully this is helpful for you guys. Let me know if there's any other types of videos you want me to solve. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.